Hi folks and welcome. Today I'm gonna to review a product that's actually not new at all and I don't think I've shown it on the channel but Steph and I have shot with it several times. We're currently in Brooklyn filming for a single light art nude portraiture course and we've been using this a fair bit. I've used it lots of other times in the past and I really, really enjoy shooting with it. So I was thinking, why haven't I actually done a review on it? And unlike if I'd been sent it to do a review and then you test it for a few days and that's it, having shot with it on and off over a year, there are some things actually that I've found that could be improved upon. So I can give you a more rounded feeling on it. Check the timeline below. I am going to quickly unbox it, but then we're going to get in and do some shooting demonstrations with it and then my conclusions as well. So you can jump to the part that suits you. First off, so this guy is called the Optical Spot. It's by Westcott and by Lindsay Adler. Now, it's fairly simple, but fairly great the way it works. It's not the first on the market that has this kind of a product. It's not the cheapest, it's by far from the most expensive, but it's a nice balance. So this is our main piece. Then it comes with a mount adapter for depending on what kind of light you're using. So this one is Bowen's to attach it. I'm just gonna do this fairly quickly so that we don't spend a whole lot of time on this. You slide the mount in, put the one screw back in, and that's basically it. Then you can that easily change if you were using a different lighting system. Because it has mounts like Bowen's, you can use it on continuous or strobe. Either is going to work fine. We're gonna do everything today in continuous so that you can clearly see what's going on uh, you know, in real time rather than just waiting for the flash to pop. Then if you take a look in this front section, it's got these four little dividers that you can pull out to make interesting little shapes there. So then you could make like a little slit of light coming through or a tiny little box or a triangle. You can make all kinds of different looks depending on what it is that you're wanting. That's the first step. Then, you also have the option of putting on front, and this all comes in the main kit, uh, little cookies. So a cookie is like a gobo with a shape. So you've got little strips, uh, more random shape strips, uh, window pane. There's, I think it comes with a dozen, and they're kind of by theme. So a little circle, a bigger circle, a bigger circle. Maybe it comes with nine. Uh, a love heart, a star. Maybe it comes with eight. So those are the different ones it comes with and they create the shape in there that then will cast a little spotlight, so an optical spot. It also comes with a little clip that you can put on front and then five different filters. So you, sorry, five different gels. So you can stack them or you can just use one and then put out, for example, a red heart or a green heart, that kind of thing. All fairly straightforward. You can also buy extra packs of gobos or cookies. These are packs of 10. We'll talk about it a bit later. They're quite expensive and a little bit fragile, so I'm not too sure on those. But on the overall kit, that's the basic setup. Then you have this guy, which is really the meat of it. This is technically a Canon mount DSLR lens with no electronics in there. But what this lets you do, which is so cool, you clip it onto the front, and then you focus it closer for focusing further away, or you, this will let you focus it really close. And why you want that is to get a perfectly crisp light and shadow where you want it. So if you guys have seen, Steph and I did a course on dramatic single light portraiture for learn.mattgranger.com. We did all kinds of cool things using like kitchen colanders and like things you would find around the house to create interesting light and shadow, like the side of this with those little cutouts that would make for an interesting pattern. But when you're doing that, to get it crisp, if I want the shadow, say, on Steph's face, I have to put the colander or the thing right here and have the light a long way away for it to be crisp. This will let you have it two foot away or 10 foot away or 20 foot away and then you focus the beam so it's hitting where you want nice and crisp. That's really where the meat of this system comes in. Now this whole kit, including the 
eight cookies, the five gels. This, the mount adapter and the bag is 500 US dollars. That's not inexpensive. That's not, you know, uh, you can just write it off as insignificant. There are kits I've seen on the market as cheap as 300 and there's others as much as like three and a half to four thousand dollars. So you kind of get what you pay for and I think the results you get from this, broadly speaking, justify the cost. But before we get into me telling you what I've found as potential issues with this, let's actually set it up and shoot with it. Before we do that, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. I see that like the majority of our viewers aren't actually subscribed. It's great, especially when we're trying to work with different partners to see that subscriber count actually grow. And if you'd like to check out my guide to improving your portraiture, you can grab a free copy. There'll be a link to that and the different courses Steph and I have made together in the description below. Now, the two ways that Steph and I have been using this quite a bit, one is to actually cast a light onto Steph or both onto her and the background if she's close to the background or to create some depth that way, but having the light and shadow on her. The other is to have her lit by one zone of light and then have this create a background effect that elevates the shot. So I wanted to do one demonstration on each of those techniques, just show you really how simple it can be once you're up and running. But just note, the first time you shoot with it, you'll probably play around and it takes you half an hour to get an idea of how it's all working. But really, once you've figured it out, it is as simple as just throw it in position, focus it, and you get pretty cool results off the bat. So thank you for wearing this little, uh, what would you call this? Well, I guess it's just a dressing gown, but it's like yeah. a kimono oh. style. Yeah. Okay. So we were going for that one because there's a really cool wave pattern that I like that I'm going to use as a background element. So let's set up the shot. So we've set up a really simple shot here. We're using the window light to give a simple light. It's gonna be a head and shoulder shot on Steph. We've got the robe on. This is for YouTube. Please don't demonetize us. We're really trying to be careful, but you can check out our Art Nude courses if you're interested in that. And I've got just the last bit of curtain there closed so that we're getting some shadowing on the wall there because that's where I'm gonna throw the optical spot in. So having that be a little darker is better. So if we take a look at our shot here, I'm gonna to go to my 80 mil lens. Here's a nice frame. Can you step slightly closer to the window? Yep. Just we've got a, some PowerPoints and stuff in the background. So super simple shot here. So you can see I'm underexposing the overall shot a little bit here. That means that her face being that it's in the window light, it's adequately brightened but the background is a little dark, but it is kind of flat, right? We've just got Steph and then nothing. If you're trying to create a really simple portrait, this is a nice way of going about it. But if we want to level it up, here's where we can bring in that optical spot into the background to create some depth in the shot. So we'll start showing just using the spotlight, then a particular gobo in there, and then we'll add a color as well and see how we can gradually build the image up. So to start off, something you want to keep in mind, this is creating a circle. So if you're shooting pretty much straight on the wall, you can have a proper circle. But if you're shooting, you know, here's your wall and you're shooting from this angle, you're going to end up creating an ellipse or an oval shape on the background. I want it closer to a circle to start off. So I'm bringing my light fairly, you know, just like 30 degrees off axis. Now to start off, this is the little holder that you have to put your different cookies into or your different gobos. But I'm gonna start off just using the little uh, doors here, like the barn doors. And let's say create a small slit of light to go in there behind her. One thing you wanna keep in mind, whatever you do, it's actually mirrored. So left becomes right, right becomes left, up and down are flipped as well. So you wanna get it right. But in this case, I'm just kind of putting a diagonal line in and I'll adjust it as we get in there, but that's what I'm gonna throw in behind Steph to begin, and then we'll build it up from there. Putting my lens back on. So let's, let's turn it on. And so we see our little slit of light there. Now I can sharpen it up. You'll see there that one side 
is rounded and one side is cut off, that means that one of these barn doors isn't fully pulled out. And seeing it's on the right there, it must mean that it's actually on the left here. So if I pull this one out, there we go, it goes back to being rounded. And if we wanna make it thinner, you see I'm pushing in the bottom, but it's actually opening the top. So let's go for kind of an odd shape here. So it's almost like a wedge of cheese to be her background, but we might need it to be on this kind of an angle to really show up in the background, we'll see. And then make sure it's focused nice and sharp. So you kind of get into a catch-22 where you want it big on the background, but then you need to be further away. So the trick is you can actually switch this to any Canon lens and use the different lenses focal length to change the size of the projection on the wall. So you could get a 200 mil lens to throw it really far and smaller or a wide angle lens. So in a tight space, you could actually create a really big reproduction with a short throw distance, kind of nifty. So that's our background for Steph. Let's get her back in and see how it's looking. So without changing the settings on my camera, now we're getting this kind of an effect. Now, first thing you might note is that the background, that slit in the background, I focused it sharp on the wall, but it doesn't look that sharp in my shot. The reason is I've blurred the background out. I'm at F1.8. So if I actually wanna get that sharp, I actually need to stop down. So if I stop down to say F4, you see it's getting a bit sharper. If I stop down to F8, sharper. And if I go all the way to say like F16, we really see that it's a nice sharp line coming through there now. So simple way to elevate the shot, really, really basic. Now let's pop in the gobo of all of those waves. Now, this is something I'm going to circle back to in the review. This holder to get it in, one to get the actual cookie in place is on this one, it's not too hard because it's all flush, but on some of them where they have little pieces, like it's a bunch of bushes and then you've got little branches that are just one piece of metal, not attached, they're only attached in one place, they bend really easily and then getting it on here can be difficult and the chance of getting one stuck in your finger or actually breaking the thing is kind of high. The second thing is getting this into the actual holder is really fiddly. Often it, you get two of the three contacts in and then it's not properly aligned so you don't get a nice crisp shadow. And after you, if you're using continuous light, it gets, and this is, this is not a criticism, you just, this is just a user warning, it gets extremely hot. This is a thin piece of metal in concentrated light. So it's gonna be crazy hot. So this piece of rubber that they have to protect, to be honest, it's pretty janky and useless. It's it feels like it's gonna fall off at some point, but it also isn't really enough to hold it and rotate it. I think they could have put another three cents worth of plastic in there to make this a proper grip that would be fully heat resistant and much more user friendly. So that's my first feedback. This way to mount this, not that fun. So to slide this guy in, essentially you need to find this track right at the back that's on these three pins. So this means this open side is the one to put it in. You need to make sure that these mounts are facing towards your subject because otherwise it won't go in smoothly. And then on, so I've let it cool down now, but it's, this part is still hot to touch, but still even having used it lots and having cooled it down, that's in but it's so easy that for one of them to kind of pop out and then you see it's no longer properly flush in. So doing it in a rush is gonna lead to trouble. See now the top isn't kind of not going in. You got to do it nice and patiently, not burn yourself and make sure all of them are in there. And if you're doing it whilst it's switched on, it's almost impossible with all that glare to see exactly where you want it to go. You're getting all of these mad reflections come through and then you've got the heat factor even more. Then you get the issue of, are these all fully out? Which one isn't because, ah, see? And then as you go to move them, the chance of it falling out gets really high. So you wanna work through that, make sure all of these guys are out. And I just find the whole process, especially when you're then dealing with hot metal, 
is a little bit fiddly and finicky. I feel like they could have designed this system better so it goes in and has a latch or something or use parts in there that are heat resistant but don't build up with heat quite as easily as like thin stainless steel does. So going back and then knowing that this is going in sideways, if I want my waves to be facing upright, I need to face them down to go in. This is where it gets tricky because once it goes in, then you do need to be rotating this to get the exact angle you want and rotating this can then bump these ones that then close down part of the background. Rotating it also is exactly what you do to loosen it and remove it so then the chance of it falling out is heightened. And that five seconds that I had it on then, it's now burning hot again. Okay, so let's just see once that's in, if it's going to give us the right angle on her to have it in the upright position. Now I don't want to over dramatize that that's like some huge thing. It really isn't. It's just when you're changing, it is fiddly. Overall still, I really like the system and you know, early summary, I think it's worth the money broadly speaking, but we'll get into that more. So let's move it into position. So we're gonna pull up it in there behind Steph. You can see it's not quite on the right angle, so I want it more straight up. Uh, and you see with those little pins that it has, rotating is really not that easy. Okay, so there, that's about upright. But something's dislodged now. Now that I've moved it that little bit, it's not, I feel like that, yeah, it is. It's gonna fall out. Okay, there we go. Now let's get it nice and sharply in focus on the wall. Great. So I'm liking how that's looking. So simple shot here. Here, if I have it just behind her, we can kind of, if I go right back, we almost see the full circle. Look out the window. If I go to This kind of orientation, we see it more. Now again, if I'm in F1.8, you can see we can fill up more of the background, but it's really soft. Stopping down to F4. We start to get the pattern come through. F8 and F11. Now, which of those do I actually like the result best on? have to factor in that at F11, I'm at such a higher ISO, I'm not sure it's the kind of the result that I want, but let's see, your outfit has red, green, yellow, everything in it. Might put blue in the background, that'll be, a, it's kind of a cooler tone to balance out and kind of separate the background out. So let's grab the blue filter. Now, as much as I whinged about the gobos, I think these are more overpriced and more janky. Um, this is just a cutout. These gels, you know, you get anywhere, so you could easily cut these if you are able to cut a nice circle and it would cost you cents. I think a pack of a dozen different colors or so is about $25. And then you've got this piece of plastic, so you have to sit it in there and it just for its life wants to bend out and jump out of there and then clip it on the front. And if it's not perfectly aligned, you won't get all of the color coming through. Here we got it but I really think that there would be a better design for that and I have a specific suggestion on that one so we'll talk about that towards the conclusion. But there now we have our blue at F11 again looking out and at F8 and let's just get one at F2.8 just to show it softer. So you can see there, given that I can't, we're in a house, I don't have 20 foot to put it away, you are limited, but that's not a criticism of the product. Pop a wider angle lens on there and we could put a whole circle on the wall there that would fill up, so then I'm not getting kind of the edges cut off. So that's a really simple one, two, three on how you can go from a simple portrait to a portrait that has something interesting in the background to something that has a specific pattern and then also adding color. And once you've got the, the gobo in there, it's not too much of a challenge. Next up, let's show how you can use that cool pattern effect 
on your subject. So if you have like a white bodysuit, we'll switch to that. Okay. I feel like I just heard the fly. We're not gonna do one of those, like, it's like off the shoulder thing. Sure, let's cut this in first then. Why don't we, now, can I get you, let's see how far can we pull this back before it's messing up my background, that's fine. And I'll get you to take a step closer to the background. Having Steph closer to the background makes the background picture basically bigger. So move that in so it's right in, filling up that spot, get it nice and crisp. There you go, and again, looking out, all thoughtful like. For this next shot, I've chosen shooting against a green wall, so we don't need to put in a colored filter. Here, we're going to have a nice separation of her warm skin tones and the green background just because they're already different colors. For this one, I thought let's go with some floral or tree type options because it goes with the green background basically. I'm sure you would have seen, it's a big Instagram bikini blogger type shot to get the palm leaf where you cast the shadow of the palm leaf down the spine of someone or across their body. It looks really cool to be fair. It is a cliche, but for a fair reason. So I thought we can, they have one that's that kind of a shape. We can do that one and then take a look at another kind of nature looking one. Now I've got plenty of cameras rolling right now so you can see the camera's eye view of Steph as I get this set up. We've got our uh, optical spot in position as far away in the opposite corner as possible. So let's take a look at the environmental gobos. It has a bunch of different options. Now I have to confess at this point, I'm kind of cheating because we've done this shot as part of the single light nude course and I know it works great. So I'm gonna go straight to one of the gobos that I know looks great and then I'll show you a couple of other options as well. So this is the guy, it's the fern pattern. So I'm going to feed it into the holder and then into here, this my least favorite part of the process. Ah, just happened. That was in real time. Look at that. So look, jokes aside, I am sometimes a little careless. I am rushing right now. But when you're on a shoot using hot equipment and with models and all that kind of thing, I think we all rush sometimes, right? So I mentioned that before. I really do think it's an issue that some of these are quite fragile and where they're only hanging on by one point, the chance of bending them is really high. And the chance of bending that back to be perfectly flat is I think close to zero. The chance, you know, it's a, attached by a millimeter. If you bend it back past its a natural point, it's more likely it's just gonna break off. Let me try it one more time without breaking anything or inadvertently piercing myself. Let's give that a shot. Now, do you wanna jump back into your spot? Yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'm I'm actually incredibly tough, so thank you. Okay, so let's turn this guy on and see it come into place on Steph. Now that's not the exact position I want it, but let's get it nice and crisp to start off. Now I want, I actually see there's a limit to how far I can rotate it. So I actually need to take the whole thing out and rotate it in the holder and it's already burning hot. So let's try putting it straight up and down and hopefully that means when it comes out, it'll be upside down. So that's closer to what I want. So I want it to have the fronds, a space for her eyes to come through there and then a strong section off to the side of her. And here you'll note because she's that little bit out from the wall, having her crisp and the wall crisp doesn't quite work. So I need to choose exactly where I want it to be nice and crisp. Now that's overexposed. You're okay though. So 
So taking a look at the shot here, I of course can zoom in from this point and I would actually do this as a portrait oriented shot. So let's just, sorry, you're gonna get dizzy as I adjust the video camera to be portrait oriented into this kind of a position. And I might even want the 85 on this, but this I think is gonna work okay. Now, I don't want, you see in the top corner there, it's being cut off. And of course, once I go to stills mode, my crop is gonna change, it's going to be wider. So I think I need the whole thing up a little bit. So that should give us where we want it. And I want it a little bit crisper on her, even if that's at the expense of the background slightly. Okay. Now what we were doing yesterday, you can see the position of that main stem right now. We were using the shadows to cover nipples so then you could potentially use them as implied shots. But you can see this frame works nicely and it just feels like we're now in a jungle or something rather than on a sofa framing out photo frames. And it's, can't really find her eye here but we're kind of getting what I want here. Now I'm gonna just switch to my 85 so I can get in a little tighter and have aperture options here. In every shooting situation, personally, I'd rather be down at my lowest ISO possible. Okay. So this is not too bad. I'll adjust the position of that light slightly. I wanna have a little bit more space for her eyes. Okay, just lean your head slightly that way and up, I wanna see both eyes, there you go. Let's, let's just rotate and see where we can see it. Look out this way a little. Now I'm sure after 27 minutes or so of this video, you're quite clear on how this guy works. So let me just show you a few of the images we created using that and a couple of different cookies with a different floral motif. You can find sample images and all the details about this kit in the description below. So, the optical spot by Lindsay Adler and Westcott. What do you think, having seen the results? I'm gonna just do a quick summary now in case people skipped ahead on the timeline on what I think of the overall ease of use, the build quality, the value, and the results, and then my overall summary. I also wanna know as we go through how you find it as someone posing in it. You, I think it's always worth asking your models. Sometimes, like, to imagine are you being hit by the light in the right place? It's almost impossible unless you can see a reflection of yourself or it's really fine lines where you can kind of sense is your eye in shadow or not or a predictable pattern, that kind of thing. Like if it's just repeated circles, that's one thing. But when it's like random nature patterns, I think it's almost impossible. So let's start with that. How okay. is it to pose in? Is it blinding? Is it confusing? I actually think it's a lot easier because if we go back to like a shoot that we did a long time ago where you had basically a colander like close to my face, you're stuck with like you or an assistant kind of holding it and trying to stay still with the light and then me trying to also kind of stay still and catch the light. But when it's already just kind of, it has this and it's already kind of like- And the beam is fixed. It's fixed. It's a lot easier to make those minor adjustments and then also take directions from a photographer who is just like, hey, like move your face a little bit because the light's gonna be there. And it's just, I think a lot faster and way more reliable. Mm. So that actually nicely leads into something that's gonna pervade all of the conclusion, which is doing a DIY route versus buying something. You have to start think about, and we all think about this in different parts of our life at different times, how do you value time versus money? Because if, you have, if you're retired and you love doing DIY, then making all of this stuff for yourself, you'll save money and you might end up with a product that absolutely suits your needs. But for a lot of people, myself included, spending a few hundred dollars to get something that just works, even if it's got some flaws to it, is worth it to save a day's work building something. So you're gonna to have to think about that for yourself. In terms of ease of use, apart from some things being a little finicky, as I said, once you get this routine down, it's really simple. And once you have it set up, it's really simple. But I still do find that having the way that you mount 
the gobo holder in there it's not ideal also notice that our one one of the three holders hasn't been bent into place so it's only being held into points we never had it drop out but just something to note that that should have been bent um, I do think this could be better designed. Steph suggested maybe magnets could maybe. work rather than that uh, slide-in system. Because I've tried it too and it's quite difficult. So <laughs> that could potentially give you a 180 rotation that could work quite well and you know we haven't done the testing to know if that's a viable option but magnets could be an option. Um, in terms of the build Overall, I don't feel like any of it's going to break, but I do, as I've mentioned, feel that these particular pieces, the gobos, are very easy to bend if you're not careful. And I really think that these guys could be designed better. It would take up more space, but if you had a fixed one of these with a gel permanently in there that then could be thicker and it's all locked into place, and then you just grab the whole blue one or the whole green one or the whole red one, rather than changing this little thing, it would be a much more user-friendly system and you could design it in a durable way. It doesn't need to then become you know, a $200 optional kit. This costs cents to make make it tens of cents to make and you could make it really fantastic I think. In terms of value the overall kit at $500 with the basic accessories I actually don't think is too bad at all comparing it to you know the results you're getting I think it's fine. Just keep in mind if you buy two extra sets so like we have the pattern gobos and the environmental ones they're $90 a kit, so them plus this plus tax and you're well north of $700 for the kit. So just keep that in mind. Um, and then making one of these yourself, maybe you have the setup to do it quite easily, but for a lot of people, this is gonna be the most fiddly part to make. So it might actually be kind of difficult to do that part on your own. If you're ordering extra gels and you wanna use their ones, that's going to add to the cost as well. So, value it kind of depends on your budget doesn't it and your approach to time versus money but i can say despite the flaws that i've pointed out here i really like this product and most importantly i really like the results that it's giving so i do intend on buying one i'm only pointing out all of these flaws because this is a review after all not a promotion i have no relationship i am a fan of lindsay adler's work and i own a lot of westcott products but they're no way related to this review um, keep in mind that's for this unit. You then potentially, like the continuous light we were filming on today is another seven or eight hundred dollars. You could be using strobes that could be anywhere from a couple of hundred to a couple of thousand dollars as well. So you need to factor all of that in if you don't already have the basics. All in all, I really like it, but I do think it has some flaws and I think most of them could be easily fixed. If you're clumsy at all, be really careful like me because there's a chance that you're going to puncture your finger or bend things but otherwise definitely worth investing in if you're looking for a way to up your creative game in your portraits to add depth and drama and color to your shots. Let me know any questions that you have and check out the sample files below as well as a guide to improving your portraiture and a few links to the different courses that Steph and I have made together that you can download to watch at your leisure. Thank you Steph. Yeah thanks for having me this is fun. We'll see you guys Bye. soon. Bye.